As the former favourite of Louis XV, the Countess Jeanne du Barry, who was born Jeanne Becou, accumulated in her name all the hatred of a people who found it hard to accept those who had enriched themselves during the ancient regime, especially when these opportunists came from their own ranks. It would ultimately cost her her head. Jeanne du Barry's relationship with Louis XV has been brilliantly documented in the movie by Mai Wen starring Mai Wen herself and Johnny Depp. In today's video, you'll find out what happened to Dubarry after the events of the movie. Jeanne Becou wrote to her mother in 1759, I'm quite sure that we won't always be poor, and if I can become rich, you will too. Jeanne fought all her life to rise in the still monarchical 18th century. But Jeanne sacrificed her safety in the midst of the French Revolution in order to preserve the splendours that had illuminated her life as a royal favourite. Jeanne was born of low descent to a seamstress on August 19, 1743, in Vaucouleurs. Due to the intervention of Monsieur Billard Dumonceau, who hired Jeanne's mother as a domestic aide and who quickly developed a fondness of the three-year-old Jeanne, Jeanne received an excellent education, enabling her to frequent the Paris salons. Quickly, Jeanne built a reputation for herself. In 1768, she was presented to King Louis XV. Despite the gossip surrounding Du Barry's character, Louis made her his favourite at the court of Versailles. The king said of her, She is very pretty, I like her, that should be enough. But Louis XV died on May 10, 1774, leaving the ill-prepared Louis XVI in charge of a country in dire need of reform. Upon the former king's death, Jeanne du Barry was expelled from Versailles and found refuge in her chateau at Louveciennes, which she had received as a gift from her deceased lover. Jeanne du Barry was in her fifties at the dawn of the French Revolution. Her home in Louveciennes, a few annuities and her jewels ensured she lived a comfortable life. She kept the diamonds and pearls which were gifted to her by Louis XV in her bedroom. She also hid some of her jewels in the garden of Louveciennes. On January 11, 1791, Jeanne left her home to attend Mass in the Louveciennes Church, only to discover upon her return her jewels and precious objects were stolen. A detailed report of the theft was drawn up by the Marechaussee. As Jeanne originally had no rank nor fortune, the theft of part of her treasure, the value of which is currently estimated to be around 60 million euros, deprived her of the means she needed to ensure her life of luxury. So Jeanne did everything in her power to recover her property, a quest that would draw unwanted attention to herself, as by then the revolution had forgotten about the former mistress of Louis XV. Jeanne had a precise list of the stolen jewellery pieces distributed to police stations and to French and foreign diamond dealers, promising them a reward if the stolen goods were returned to her. Jeanne's possessions were soon found in London, the thieves were imprisoned there, but, as in the 18th century, there were no conditions for extradition between France and England. The criminals had to serve their sentences in England, and Jeanne had to travel to England no fewer than four times between 1791 and 1793 in the hope of recovering her property. To leave French territory, she had to obtain travel papers in a country that was hardening towards aristocrats who were seeking to emigrate in order to flee the revolution. During her multiple stays in England, Jeanne offered board and lodging to newly arriving French aristocrats. And when Louis XVI was executed on January 21st, 1793, she did not hesitate to dress in mourning attire. In March 1793, France declared emigration an offence punishable by confiscation of property, and Dubarry's estate at Louveciennes was confiscated. Upon receiving news of her beloved chateau being taken by the revolution, Jeanne rushed back to France to justify her stay in England and to regain her property. But upon her arrival in France, two of Jeanne's former servants, among whom Zamor, organised petitions against the return of Jeanne to Louveciennes. The French Revolution had changed the relationship between Dubarry and Zamor. Although Jeanne and Zamor, a slave boy who had been gifted to Dubarry by the king, had always been close, as an adult, Zamor, who had been fascinated by Rousseau, became committed to the revolutionary ideas. Slowly, he was convinced by his revolutionary friends that Dubarry did not love him and regarded him being her property, much like a dog, which prompted him to lash out against Jeanne. During these first accusations, Dubarry was detained in her home. Remembering the generosity she had shown towards the people of Louveciennes, 
the inhabitants of her village testified on her behalf, and Jeanne was exonerated. In September 1793, the reign of terror took hold of France. A series of massacres and numerous public executions started to take place. Self-appointed surveillance committees started to hunt down so-called suspects, and Jeanne du Barry was one of them. She was arrested on September 22, 1793, as she was accused of uncivil behaviour and aristocracy. Jeanne was transported to the Saint-Pélagie prison in Paris. Upon her transport to Paris, several of her former servants, among whom Zamor, took advantage of the situation and enriched themselves by looting Jeanne's home. On November 19, 1793, Jeanne was taken to the Conciergerie prison in the Palais de Justice, where she was interrogated for four days after which she was returned to Saint-Pélagie prison. On December 4, 1793, Jeanne was once again taken to the Conciergerie, this time to be tried by the Revolutionary Court at the Palais de Justice. The Revolutionary Court consisted of a president, four judges, a public prosecutor, and 12 paid jurors. Its jurisdiction covered all counter-revolutionary crimes. Judgments were final and immediately enforceable. On December 6 and 7, 1793, Jeanne du Barry appeared before the accuser of the Revolutionary Court, Monsieur Antoine Quentin Fouquet-Tinville, who accused her of travelling to England to conspire against the French Republic. Although Jeanne provided evidence of the theft, it was not sufficient for the court. Furthermore, her status as a former royal mistress weighed in the balance, and Jeanne du Barry was sentenced to death on 7th of December 1793. Jeanne du Barry, mistress of Louis XV, was to be guillotined on December 8, 1793, by the executioner Charles Henri Sanson. In his memoirs, Sanson mentions that, of the thousands of people he had to behead, none caused him as much trouble as Madame du Barry. Although the unfortunate woman had risen to the heights of aristocratic splendour, she had not acquired the same unwavering dignity in the face of terrible adversity. Upon receiving her death sentence, Jeanne started to negotiate for her life. The negotiations even delayed the departure of the wagon which was to take her to the guillotine. In the hope of delaying the punishment, she proposed to reveal the location where, in her garden in Louvissienne, she had buried her remaining jewels but her pleas were ignored. Jeanne's neck was freed, her hands were tied behind her back, and Jeanne du Barry was carried onto the wagon. Soon, the wagon arrived at the Place de la Révolution, and an atrocious scene unfolded. Crazy with fear, her eyes bulging out of her head, Jeanne struggled, sobbed, screamed terribly, and called out in vain to the audience, I don't want to die. I don't want to die. Don't let me die. Please don't let me die. When the wagon came to a halt in front of the guillotine, the executioner's aides had to use force to hoist her onto the platform. She clung desperately to their clothes, screaming, Please free me, please don't kill me. With difficulty, she was strapped underneath the blade of the guillotine. Sanson grabbed her by the hair to place her head in the correct position. Jeanne now begged, Just one more minute, executioner, please, just one more. But the blade fell, and Sanson picked up Jeanne's head and presented it to the cheering crowd. Despite the undignified death of Dubarry, one thing is certain, however. While awaiting her trial at the Conciergerie, Jeanne let an opportunity to escape pass in favour of Adélaïde Pauline, Duchesse of Mortemar, who was consequently able to flee to England, thanks to Jeanne Dubarry. Thank you for watching, and please don't forget to comment, like and subscribe to support this channel.